It's a little bit late. It's, uh, it's about 3, 3.45 or something. I'm not sure what time it is. So I've been here for several hours painting in my studio. I, my brain gets kind of put on fire <laughs> and I, I just can't stop thinking. Um, so I have a hard time sleeping sometimes because I'm just so excited. My creative mind just can't rest and it just, so I, I'm starting a new series of paintings. I've done nine of them so far. And it's the first time I've been in my, in my studio painting for over a year. Um, those of you that don't know, I, uh, to bring you up to speed, I had two forms of cancer. I had, uh, uh, melanoma and that was removed. I have like 21 stitches and 11 stitches. Uh, then I have CLL, which is chronic lymphocytic leukemia, uh, and it's in remission now. Um, I was pretty much pushed to the edge of uh, living. As I don't think it gets much, uh, much more to the edge than that, and I think probably on the other, mostly on the other side. Uh, I was. Four months of chemotherapy, then a state of neutropenia, then pneumonia, and then COVID. I was in and out of ICU nine days, then I had a break for three weeks back in for six, six days, then a break for five weeks. And it, my infection just kept getting worse and worse. Then I was put in a coma and was in a coma for 52 days on life support with a trach. Uh, for 62 days and in the hospital for 99 days. I had to relearn how to walk, eat, uh, I was pretty much pushed to the limit and my beautiful wife Tanya was with me um, 12 to 14 hours a day every day uh, for every from begin from before beginning middle and after everything um, over the last year and a half uh, I have been I've been painting for 30 years pretty obsessively and over the last year and a half I've been kind of constantly constantly like a Rubik's cube in my mind always trying to think and feel and process and create this new language. Uh, I've painted some other things, in, but in the back of my head, I was always, I've been, I've done these sketches and I've been working, um, I, I've been painting for a few hours, so my brain's kind of uh, thinking in color more than it is in words. So I, uh, sometimes I'm a lot more articulate than this. And right now I'm trying to um, bridge the gap to share with you uh, the, this new series. Um, I was thinking about, the things that I was thinking about were and feeling, I wanted to take that feeling and create this language. And the language and the vocabulary was, or what I want, I love art and how do you express it? Um, when I look at a Jackson Pollock painting, it's flat. All the paint is just kind of like a spider's web. It's flat. It's 2D. When I look at um, the Voice of Fire, Barrett Newman's large painting in the National Gallery, it's just two, or I think it's two or three uh, bars of color. When I look at a Piedmodrian, his later work, 
He his composition in blue. He'll do these lines, and then like in blue and a little primary color red. Uh, and abstract art, is, so much of it is. Um, even William de Kooning, like there's there's some kind, but it, it's flat. It feels flat to me, and. When I go over and I look at, say, Monet's water lilies, he created a depth. He would go over and he would add this, he would use the paint in such a way where he maximized and the transparency, semi-transparency and opaqueness and how he orchestrated his colors and his his color system uh, his red yellow and blue and how he maneuvered those and how he selected his colors and where he placed them in the same way that how you look at like a Gauguin painting you would have your 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 lights and then you like Rembrandt you'd have your shadows and the same way that you'd have a portrait or when you look at the water lilies you would start having form and three-dimensional layering and I really wanted to highlight those properties more into abstraction but I wanted it to uh, through layering and through kind of like uh, different techniques to heighten that that sense of layering and depth but so I've been thinking about that and how to translate that. I tried going over and creating a depth and perspective and through the Cocoon series. And where I really make it so you feel like you're entering into the painting and the painting is kind of opening up and where it has that kind of, that full kind of, um, and I, I managed to get, I really pushed it and I felt really successful in that. Um, that was a huge, that, that took a long time to really, um, create all the little subtleties and all the depth that I wanted to do technically you know as a painter I really want to um, you can get lost in emotion and and it's nice to think of the technical elements and the the craft and you know when I look at uh, a Rembrandt painting and how he used a palette knife and he scraped a little bit and you'd pull the paint and it would kind of freckle and that would give you the depth. And when I look at a Monet painting and how he would use like a phthalo green or, and, or then he would put, which is phthalo green as a transparent pigment. And then over top, he would put like a cerulean blue on top and that cerulean blue was opaque and it would layer on top. And then on the edge of the water lily, right in the very edge, like a shoelace, he would tuck in a little bit of uh, like a, an alizarin crimson or, or like a cadmium red. And then it would triangulate the colors and it would create that depth. And so those things, when I look at the old master paintings, those are the things, you know, when I look at uh, a Van Gogh painting, and if you look at uh, his bedroom, and if you look at his bedroom painting, and you look at the very heel of the, the here, I'll show you, like, when you look at, here's a table, and when you look right, at that little space right there.
when you look at the, you look at his, uh, you look at his, or even his chair painting, right at that edge, he'll put, he'll sneak in like an emerald green, or he'll sneak in a little bit of, uh, a little bit of red there. Uh, same thing with Soutin's work, when he would paint his, uh, all of his work, he always, he'd always put like a little bit right on the edge of the ear and it would, it would offset and that space between the background and the foreground, he would just, they just put a little touch right there and it. It makes all the colors vibrate and it brings it all to life in, in a visual color manner. And so I was thinking a lot about those things and I wanted to go over and take abstraction and use all of that kind of those technical elements that I, I love, like I, that fascinate me because so when I was wanting to do this new series, which I'm not sure of the title, um, I'm starting to come up with it. I I'm thinking in, color and I'm thinking not in words so much at the moment or in poetry though the paintings have their own sense of poetry they are um, fuck they're good I love them I I've been thinking in my head and kind of constantly like a Rubik's cube, constantly trying to figure it out, how to translate that, how to make the painting shimmer, how to make the paintings have that depth, how to make them kind of vibrate and move and how to color, get the color combination so that it has this ethereal kind of uh, dreamlike state and where it has a depth and, and it opens up and it pulsates and vibrates and and I'm really excited about it. And I've been thinking about how to do this technically for, you know, uh, in the middle of the night when I'm like really struggling with kind of existential thoughts in the middle of the night while I was on my cancer journey. Not that I'll ever not be in it because uh, it's chronic, uh, though it is in remission, I'll, um, um, add that it's I would sit there and lie in bed and constantly keep trying to kind of do the the calculus and the formulas of the paint and how to try to take that 2x or x to the like the derivative how to take that and rather than just being an X and a Y, I wanted to do X, Y, and Z. So it has like a three dimensional aspect to these abstract paintings. And that's ultimately what I was trying to do. And then on top of that, in a, what was kind of thinking in my brain is, you know, art is, has to have soul and art has to have a feeling and if a painting doesn't have a feeling, it's, it's, to me, it's dead. Um, somewhere, the success of a painting is, is the heartbeat of a painting, you know, and a painting ultimately is dancing color. And if you can get that rainbow of color and you can kind of allow yourself to dance and move through that and you can allow yourself to kind of walk through the rain and you can walk through that rainbow and you can open your your soul to that prism of light then all of that can just and that's what i was trying to do with this series and that's where i'm at uh i think uh the title of the series i have to talk to tanya about that one of the things that I love is that she's incredible with words. 
I absolutely love her words. I, she often gets kind of, she, she, it's, it's, um, I love her for her words. For me, she's just an incredible writer and I love her thoughts. And you know, every woman wants to be, or I, I don't know, I'm fucking, I'm probably putting my foot in my mouth again, but she, she's a sexy, beautiful, I call her sexy T for sexy Tanya. Um, and, but I've got to, we'll sit down and we'll sit in my studio and we'll talk and we'll talk about words and try to figure it out. I know that uh, Jenny and Tom Magpie, they do that as well. And uh, I gotta say her, it, it, you gotta follow that tag team because they really, uh, they're, her titles are, <laughs> are hysterical and they're, they're make them like kind of contemporary and, and a social kind of uh, political, um, commentary on current events and 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 Tom Magpie I've bought several of his works and he's phenomenal and um and I I look at them as uh, as a couple and they inspire me and I um and Tanya and I we we go in and we have our own little thing and you know uh and that little thing feels like infinity. It's so incredible. I'm just so that I'll come up with a title with Tanya. I have some ideas. Uh, well, there goes a the car. It's really late. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. Anyways, uh, I'm not going to ramble on if you made it this far. God bless you. Um, and uh, I'll be having another uh, very soon I'll be sharing this uh, new body of work. Uh, I think it will be titled Life is Beautiful, uh, the Resurrection Series. I'm not 100% sure. That's kind of uh, what comes to mind. And it is um, just that. Life is pretty fucking beautiful. So thank you.